Oh hey, it's another ranking video. A bit of a smaller one this time around. I was gonna do every Twisted Metal Special Attack ranked from worst to best, but I realized that that one's gonna be much longer and take much more preparation. However, somebody suggested I do every boss ranked from worst to best, and I thought that would be a good idea, seeing as there aren't many bosses in the Twisted Metal franchise. By my count and interpretation, there's only 24. The only difficulty in ranking the bosses is determining what counts as a separate boss and what counts as a different phase of the same boss, but that only comes up a handful of times and it'll be taken on a case-by-case -case basis. Otherwise than that, let's go go go! There was only ever going to be one boss fight at the bottom for me, that being Iron Maiden from Twisted Metal 2012. This fight sucks but I kind of appreciate it for what it was trying to be. It was trying to break away from the standard big enemy with a bunch of health and a funky special attack style boss fight, but in the process creates the most obnoxious fight in the series. So the fight starts and this giant robot, Iron Maiden, is just standing there, or rather flying there. You can't actually attack it. What you have to do is destroy the red car, aka the gang leader, then grab the driver and take them to a spot behind this truck that launches nukes. But you can't just take them there. You need to hold them there for something like 20 seconds while you're being shot at by everything around you. Look at this. This is ridiculous. Then you have to shoot the nuke, however Iron Maiden is trying to shoot the nuke out of the sky and the nuke can't take that much damage, so it's very trivial to have to repeat step 1 because step 2 is obnoxiously fiddly. Or possibly because the nuke just straight up phases right through the robot. Are you kidding me? This part takes forever. You need to do this twice, first with the nuke truck being stationary and second with the nuke truck on the move. Then following that you have to take out Iron Maiden with whatever weapons you have on hand, except there's one problem. Iron Maiden is a robot that stays way high up in the sky, too high for most of your weapons, so you spend this chunk of the fight looking for anything that has a homing function, or you painstakingly wait for Iron Maiden to come down. Then just over halfway through they activate this mode where if you don't stay within this circle for a combined 40 seconds you'll self-destruct, except the canyon roads are not straight, so staying within the circle is sometimes completely infeasible. You'll have to exit the ring just to get back into the ring on the other side. This is agony! Following that, the next part is actually the easiest part of the fight. The robot is on its last legs and it's hanging from this bridge, meaning that it's a really easy target, so it's a boss fight that gets easier as it goes on. But that's not all, because they make you think the boss fight is over. You're waiting for the results screen, but ha! Guess what? The fight isn't over, because apparently it needed another stage when it was already like 20 minutes long. The head is all that's left, so it's a repeat of the second phase except with a much smaller target. By the end of the fight, I was just praying for it to end. It went on for so long, it just went on and on and on. So between having two extremely obnoxious phases and taking way too long, this is an easy choice for worst boss fight in the entire history of Twisted Metal. Screw you for taking the name of my favorite band and attributing it to this abomination. Oh, and as a final insult? My game froze right when I beat the boss. F**k Iron Maiden. I never thought I'd say that. When it comes to the bottom two boss fights, they're pretty much a tie. You can arrange them in any way you wish and I wouldn't argue. Truth be told, most of this list is gonna consist of Twisted Metal 4 entries because it had the most bosses. It was a steady uptick at first. You had one boss fight in the first game, two in the second, three in the third, and then the fourth had eight. Eight boss fights. This is because they wanted every level to have its own fight, which given how long each level takes really doesn't help the fact that it's my least favorite game in the series. But the worst boss for me is also the final boss, Sweet Tooth, which is a shame because it's not like this is the low point, then it gets better. You've come this far? Screw you. Sweet Tooth has tons of health like every other boss fight in the game, but he also has the cheapest attack in the series. It's able to grab you and kill you in one hit. You can warp away or put up a shield, a few times, but he doesn't exactly wait for you to regenerate your energy as he can fire multiple of these in quick succession. If you're caught in one, you're dead. What was the phrase I used last time? Stretch my face out with lips and call me Gavin. What the hell was that? 
Your only hope is to fight long range. This is the type of broken boss fight that can easily drain all your lives in a handful of minutes. So even if you get to Sweet Tooth here without dying once, there's a chance you still might lose. It's just absolute horse hockey. The only thing that saves it from being the worst boss fight in this series overall is that if you know what you're doing, it's over mercifully quick as opposed to Iron Maiden, which even though I knew what I was doing, still took over 20 minutes. So fun fact, when I ranked all the levels in the Twisted Metal series from worst to best, I cut a line from the video pertaining to the Dark Side boss fight in Washington DC in Twisted Metal 3. It was a comment about how it's impossible to take a boss fight seriously when this is a character that was upgraded from being a standard playable character in the first game to a boss fight in the third game. I realized, though, that Darkseid, at least in the early entries, is canonically Satan, so I guess it makes sense that you'd use him as a boss fight, and I guess it also makes sense that he'd end up allying himself with Calypso once they retconned a few things. But that still doesn't mean this is a good fight. First of all, it takes place in arguably the worst mandatory level in the series, one which I described as feeling like someone put in what was intended as a test stage into the final build of the game by accident. Second of all, Twisted Metal 3 is arguably mechanically the worst game in the series, with a poorly built engine that makes you feel like you're driving around weightless RC cars made out of balsa wood. And then there's the boss in its own right, which kind of isn't very good. While it may make sense canonically to have Darkseid elevated to boss fight status, it still feels like they basically just took a standard enemy and plopped them into boss fight status without changing anything. It has no grand gimmick, no great attack, it's just an enemy with more health. As a matter of fact, I found myself dominating Darkseid easier than most standard enemies. I just found it very boring. It kind of makes you wonder what was even the point of having a boss fight here if it wasn't going to at least have an attempt at being a worthwhile boss fight. So between that and the game it's part of, well, it's just a very, very skippable boss fight. So I won't lie. While I think that Twisted Metal 4 places at the bottom of my personal list overall, the actual bosses aren't the reason for that. It has more to do with the level design and the relentless length of each battle. The gameplay engine is actually more refined than Twisted Metal 3, truth be told. So the bosses outside of Sweet Tooth are generally alright, if not spectacular, so I guess Minion gets the second lowest score in the game. I already don't like Minion's Maze as a level, but this is yet another semi-rehash of the same Minion fight we've been fighting since Game 1, and by this point it's completely undeniable that it's just a recycled idea. It's just Minion again, only this time it's far too easy and is in a really obnoxiously designed level. I mean, I died at one point largely due to my own incompetence, and it took me something like 45 seconds to navigate Minion's Maze to even find him in order to whittle down what little health he had left. I guess it goes to show that when there's nothing particularly stand out about a boss fight, it's only really as good as the level you fight them in, which between that and the fact that this is a four-peat of the exact same boss fight puts this minion fight on the lower end for the series. You know, I feel bad for placing Tower Tooth from head-on this low because it isn't a bad fight in theory. It's actually pretty interesting. Once you defeat this game's version of Dark Tooth, Tower Tooth rises from its ashes, and this is an insanely massive, insanely tough monstrosity of a vehicle. It's got insanely powerful attacks and what amounts to a Tesla field around it that prevents you from getting close. But what is it that ruins this boss fight? Well, it's really broken and easy to cheese. Essentially, Tower Tooth is only effective within a certain range, and because this thing is so big, it has trouble navigating elevated areas, and as a result, there are certain spots you can sit that are functionally out of its range, from which you can basically just sit there taking pot shots. There's nothing stopping you from fighting it head on, but if you have to go out of your way to even play the game properly, then I consider it a pretty badly designed boss fight. There should be systems put in place to prevent broken tactics like this. For example, it's fairly trivial to make Minion fall off the building in the first game, but they made sure that it only did a bit of damage in order to prevent you from being able to cheese the fight. 
Overlooking something this massive ruins the fight, unfortunately, but at least Tower Tooth has a different name to Dark Tooth, so technically it's a different fight, so at least I don't have to bundle them together. So Piecemeal is the final boss of Twisted Metal Small Brawl, commonly considered one of the weaker entries in the series, which I speculate is just a regurgitated talking point by people who haven't actually played the game, because personally, I think it's a great game. Of course, tone and presentation count for a lot, but at the end of the day, you have to judge a game by whether or not it's fun to play, and Small Brawl certainly is that. That said, the final boss, Piecemeal, is a disappointment. According to a commenter who worked on the game, Small Brawl was rushed towards the end of the game, so the final boss suffered. It's essentially just a regular enemy with a bunch of health and attacks that aren't special enough to warrant them belonging to a final boss. Even conceptually, I think this boss is a bit lame. One of the things they do to try and spice it up is having it to where it pops up every time you destroy one of your opponents, then you fight it for a bit and then it disappears and then you repeat that cycle until it's destroyed. In theory, it builds up anticipation knowing that you have to survive multiple encounters, and there's a predictable pattern to when it shows up, but it just makes the boss fight really annoyingly stop and start. I wish they would have just let the boss fight play out. Plus, the actual arena is fairly lame. Sometimes a boss fight is only as interesting as the arena itself, as I said, and this is just a slanted floor with rows of seats. Seats that piecemeal can destroy, but that's besides the point. So yeah, piecemeal ends small brawl on a bit of a damp squib. But if one of the developers admits that they didn't have time to do everything they wanted to do with the boss fight, I feel vindicated in placing it this low. Minion in Twisted Metal 3 is yet another boss that suffers from the game it's part of. Obviously, Twisted Metal 3 has a horrible game engine, and as such, anything that comes out of it is not going to get very high marks. So what's the issue here that differentiates it from the other boss fights in the game? Well, quite frankly, I think it's simply far too easy a boss fight. Pound for pound, I think it's the most easy minion has ever been. Much like Darkseid, it feels like a regular-ass fight with double the health. It does have that super attack that Minion is well known for, but it only used it like twice on me. Otherwise, I managed to beat Minion on one life, with both of us getting a few health pickups. I was playing on medium, by the way. It's hard for me to even discuss this boss fight because it was so completely uneventful. I guess that's that. Moving on. Looking back on my footage of the boss fight of Super Thumper from Twisted Metal 4, I realized something. Something like a solid minute goes by before either of us actually do any sort of damage to each other. I'm not prepared to say this is an AI issue or that this is just a matter of the road rage level being way too big. I am, however, prepared to say it's both. If you recall, I named the road rage level one of the worst levels in the entire series simply because it's way too big. So actually having a one-on-one -on -one match in it is one of the more boring ways to have a fight in this game. Plus, despite paying lip service to the idea of being quote-unquote Super Thumper, nothing really feels Super Thumper about Super Thumper. Or rather, there's nothing super about Super Thumper. It attacks you with regular attacks, and even when Thumper occasionally hits you with its special attack, it's the same special attack that Thumper has always had. It doesn't feel like a boss fight. Once again, it just feels like a regular fight plastered onto the end of a normal fight. So I'm not gonna lie, the RC car boss fight in Twisted Metal 4 is a big ol' heap of nothing. It spent most of its time just driving away from me, barely even making an attempt to attack. Was this the compromise for having eight separate boss fights, making each individual boss kind of ineffectual and unremarkable in order to not have any one overshadow the others? I don't know, but I'm starting to notice a pattern in this game where most of my time fighting these bosses is spent chasing after them. I like boss fights that are tough and engage me head on rather than giving me a runabout. I'd rather feel like prey being hunted, not the predator hunting prey. So it's not a bad boss fight, it's just kind of mediocre, but I'd say we're over the hump now. Crusher, so called because he likes to crush things, is a fairly standard boss fight in Twisted Metal 4. 
Get ready to hear that a couple of times. Like most boss fights in this particular game, Crusher seemingly has very little interest in actually attacking me, but when it does, it has a pretty interesting special attack, very similar to the likes of Mr. Slam in Twisted Metal 2. It doesn't particularly feel like much of a boss fight though, because it doesn't feel climactic, and Crusher isn't really that hard once you get down to it. I guess this is the issue with diluting boss fights to such an extent to have a boss fight every single level. You just end up with a lot of decent, but not particularly noteworthy boss fights. However, since it's an original character, you don't have any preset expectations of what this character is supposed to be, so at least it's better than the likes of Super Thumper in that regard. If the Iron Maiden entry didn't spell it out for you, Twisted Metal 2012 was not satisfied just doing standard boss fights. They wanted to have each final chapter of each campaign be special, so step right up Sweet Tooth's Carnival of Carnage. Less of a boss fight, more of a stage. The actual functional boss fight portion of this level is subversive to the point where it's not even a Twisted Metal game anymore. You're in a helicopter and you have to destroy various Sweet Tooths in robot form, then you grab them with your magnetized pickup and then drop them down the head hole of the main contraption, which is just a giant clown head on a hydraulic lift. It stretches the subject matter to the point where this doesn't even feel like Twisted Metal anymore, it feels closer to an ironically over-the-top post-apocalyptic sci-fi game. It's interesting and is very much functional, there's chaos all around you, but you have enough health that it's not overwhelming, so it's pretty compelling in the actual boss fight compartment, but the rest of Sweet Tooth's Carnival of Carnage that builds up to the final boss doesn't really wet my gusset. And since this boss fight is named after the entire mobile contraption, you also have to count the rest of it. It starts off with having you get into the carnival, which incorporates this fight where you have to destroy this clown face. This entire fight is somewhere between insultingly easy and painfully difficult, all depending on how inconvenient the timing is for the clown head to retract. Then you have to ram a bomb-wielding clown into a face three times. Once again, the difficulty is wildly inconsistent, depending on how keen the bomb-throwing guy is to jump on your car instead of the chainsaw-wielding guys. Then there's the obstacle course, which is surprisingly not as difficult as it looks. As a full package, this boss fight, like Iron Maiden, goes on for too long, but it's not nearly that bad. I did find myself getting frustrated on the first and second stages, so I can't exactly say that I'm particularly enamored with the boss fight. Combine that with the fact that it barely even qualifies as Twisted Metal gameplay, and I'd say this ranks as a pretty conflicting boss fight overall. Definitely it has some of the higher highs just through sheer ambition, but with that, some pretty low lows as well. But at least 2012 feels mechanically good, which is why I'm placing it higher than some of the other boss fights in the series that are technically functionally better. Moon Buggy is yet another fairly basic boss fight from Twisted Metal 4. It does have this cosmic beam type attack that sucks you in, akin to the Sweet Tooth special attack, but it's not nearly as bad. Mostly because it does a reasonable amount of damage if it sucks you in, but that's still by no means cause to get complacent. It can and absolutely will still kill you. With that said, outside of the occasional cosmic beam attack, I found Moon Buggy to be fairly passive often taking my hits without even attempting to turn around and attack me. Once again, I'm not sure if the AI is having a brain fart, or if this is just an issue with the AI universally. But either way, it's an inoffensive boss fight. I just think the battlefield once again is far too big for a one-on-one -on -one fight, but at least it isn't nearly as big as other battlefields, so this is at the very least less offensive in that regard. <laughs> Primeval is possibly the only boss fight in Twisted Metal 3 to feel like an actual boss fight. I won't bore you with the same issues that I've brought up every time I've talked about Twisted Metal 3, but as you know, I can only put this boss fight so high. But for what it's worth, the level is good, and Primeval has some fun attacks unique to it that makes this feel like what it's supposed to feel like. On medium, I managed to beat Primeval on one life, but just barely, and I think the only reason I was able to beat it on one life is the most damning flaw with the fight. The AI for Primeval just goes brain dead at times, allowing you to stay in one spot for a surprising amount of time and be okay. Still, for what it's worth, this is a worthy but still flawed boss fight. 
When you're in the fray, it's really tough and really exciting, so at least it's a decent way to round the game off. Plus, they broke out the Rob Zombie for this boss fight, so you gotta give it props for that. As far as taking previously established characters and upgrading them to the realms of boss fight, at the very least, Super Axel from Twisted Metal 4 looks the part. He's been visually upgraded and looks pretty sick, all things considered. Outside of that, it's still a fairly standard but inoffensive boss fight. In keeping with the other Twisted Metal 4 boss fights, there's certainly a lack of action in that Mr. Super Axel has a tendency of going off on his own and having you chase after him, but at the very least, the level's alright, and there is a definite upgrade to Axel's special attack compared to the other entries in that the Shock Wave will actually light you on fire, so at the very least, they try to do something unique with Super Axel in this case. Otherwise than that, it's basically what you've come to expect with the boss fights in Twisted Metal 4. But I think it's definitely on the upper end because it definitely tries harder than some of the other fights. Super Slam and Super Augur in Twisted Metal 4 are rather unique in that it's the only boss fight in the game where you have to fight two bosses at once, and hey, if you're gonna pay lip service to the idea of having super versions of previously existing characters that don't feel particularly super, at least having two at once is a great way to raise the stakes, and what can I say, double your opponents, double your fun. Having to fight two separate bosses at the same time actually adds to the fun factor in that it forces you to split your focus. It also leads to some organically exciting moments where either Super Augur or Super Slam could easily sneak up on you, and the double trouble element does make it more satisfying to pull through compared to the other fights. Really what it comes down to is two heads is better than one. It's really no more complicated than that. So Dark Tooth is the first phase of the final boss in Twisted Metal Head On. Of course, we've already discussed Tower Tooth, the second phase, and as for the first phase, Dark Tooth, it's pretty good. A nice meaty but familiar boss fight. It's not gonna break any new ground, but it's a big beefy car with some pretty devastating attacks, lots of health, and no mercy. If you're not careful, it'll literally and figuratively chew you up and spit you out. It helps that this is part of Twisted Metal Head On, which is mechanically one of the better games in the series. Not the best by any means, but definitely one of the better ones. It's definitely let down by being a bit on the easier side as far as bosses go, but that's still no reason to get complacent, as all it takes is one false move and you will get dominated. So yeah, it's fairly basic, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, so long as it's good. As far as basic boss fights in well-designed games go, you can do worse than Dark Tooth in Twisted Metal head-on. I wonder if, theoretically, the mid-boss and the final boss of Small Brawl were switched around, how much better the game would have fared in the fullness of time. Probably not much better, but Trapper is a decent boss fight in a game with very good mechanics, meaning it's in the upper tier of the boss fights in the series. There's nothing particularly stand out about this boss fight. They section off a chunk of the mini golf mayhem level, so there's not so much open space, but the chunks of the level that they do use makes for a good battlefield. You see, this right here is what Twisted Metal 4 should have done because Twisted Metal 4's levels are universally too big for one-on-one, -on -one, or even eight-player deathmatches. So if they were to have cut down the levels to the most interesting parts like this game does, those boss fights would be universally significantly better. So Trapper in Small Brawl sets a precedent that pretty much every other boss fight should look at. Meanwhile, Trapper's major attack is throwing mankeys at you, so there is some uniqueness to this fight. It's a perfectly good boss fight that leaves me with nothing major to complain about, and it caps off a really solid level. Nothing more, nothing less. The Brothers Grimm in Twisted Metal 2012 is the only boss fight that actually feels like a Twisted Metal game in Twisted Metal 2012. So by default, it's the best, but that doesn't mean it's without its own faults. You have two absolutely massive monster trucks you have to face down at the same time. It's mostly a fair, balanced, and fun fight, although they do have this one shockwave attack that throws you halfway across the map, which gets pretty irritating. 
plus you don't get to pick your car in this game. You're stuck with roadkill. I mostly played with the sweet tooth car in this game, mostly because it has the most health and best special attack. That said, despite being a really fun fight, they do get a little bit too cute halfway through. Once you take out one of the brothers Grimm, the remaining one gets armored up, so you have to painstakingly go under the monster truck until your assistant can plant a C4. Which isn't too bad, unless the monster truck decides to teleport away. That's the second fight in this game now that the basic mechanics completely messed up. But after that, it was fairly smooth sailing, and quite frankly, I enjoy this boss fight. It's challenging, the two giant monster trucks offer a boss fight experience that you can't get in a standard level, the unique attacks adds a splash of intrigue, if not fun, to the fight, and overall, this is the only fight in Twisted Metal 2012 that gets cute, but not too cute for its own good. So it manages to push the envelope without going too far. Give it a pass. Minion's fight in the very first game is an instant classic if you ask me. The atmosphere is thick on the ground with visuals that give a sense of lingering tension with the almost apocalyptic color scheme. You have the eerie music and a sense of imminent danger with the setting being a rooftop level. So there's danger of falling all around you. Then there's that plain text pop-up that begins the fight. You think you're finished with this surprisingly easy level, but no, the worst is still yet to come. The actual fight is not exceptional. You have the sense that they were under a lot of time crunch because Minion doesn't get an attack of his own, but rather his attack is essentially an amalgamation of every powerful attack in the game rolled into one. But it's still a difficult but fair boss fight. Minion has a lot of health, but as long as you keep your cool and are able to keep your distance and strike at the right opportunity, you'll wear him down in no time. It's a very standard fight mechanically, there's no real gimmick to this one, you just have to stick and run, and simply be better than your opponent. So for being a pure mechanical exercise that utilizes the threat of a level of power and health that you haven't seen up to this point, and of course Twisted Metal 95 simply being a fun game in its own right, the minion fight from the original Twisted Metal game, the very first boss fight in the series, gets my stamp of approval. It's hard for me to say if I count Dark Tooth from Twisted Metal 2 as one boss fight or two, considering the fact that there's a definitive split. But considering both phases are still called Dark Tooth, I consider it two stages of the same fight, and honestly, it's a pretty good fight. The first stage is incredibly hard. Dark Tooth is essentially like any other car you fought, but on steroids. His standard attack is Sweet Tooth Special. He's massive, and he has incredible amounts of health. You can't hide either. Even though Dark Tooth can't navigate the subway tunnels in the Hong Kong level, if you try and hide out there, he'll send what amounts to bowling ball bombs at you to smoke you out. Dark Tooth is fast and relentless, so you have to be really good at playing cat and mouse in order to whittle down his health. But the second phase is genuinely the most surprising thing about this fight. If you aren't familiar with these games, up to this point, you've only faced characters who have one phase. So you're playing this expecting the ending to come as soon as you're done, but you get a second plain text pop-up, basically telling you that we're not done yet. And now the decorative figurehead of Dark Tooth is attacking you. The second phase is much easier than the first phase, I find, and I couldn't tell you why. I guess it doesn't quite have the same tendency to throw freeze blasts at you, and tends to favor throwing clown heads at you instead. So if you can freeze it a few times, you can make Dark Tooth your bitch. It's fairly trivial to face him head on and not even lose one life. But still, this is overall a very good boss fight, and one that caps off the game very well. Now, I don't want to come across as a hypocrite here, given the fact that I've already complained about how repetitive it is to fight Minion over and over, but in Twisted Metal Black, it's different. Aside from the in-game context of who Minion is being very different and more interesting than the other games, it's also a Minion fight that acts differently than the others, both in how you fight him as well as how Minion acts and attacks. The trouble with having a rigid gameplay formula like Car Combat is sometimes it can be hard to come up with an idea for unique gameplay within the established set of rules, because it's one of those things where if you push it a little bit too far, suddenly it ceases to be Car Combat. 
so they had a bit of a genius idea in Twisted Metal Black. Have it to where you fight Minion, but he has a shield all around him. How do you destroy the shield? You have to destroy the four shield generators that are placed on each side of the car, so it requires thoughtful aiming and unique tactics that takes advantage of all the mechanics and special attacks at your disposal. Plus, Minion is a son of a bitch in itself, having a special attack that can completely rip you up. So it's basically the ultimate challenge with a unique spin. The only thing that takes away from this fight is honestly the arena in itself. It has a standard sporting arena setup, so it's a perfect oval, meaning that it's very easy to avoid minion just by driving in a large circle. It takes a while and requires a defensive playstyle, but once you understand that, it's not an outrageously hard fight. Still, the basic mechanical setup is fun and unique. Not taking the concept as far as they could as far as unique boss fights for this gameplay formula, but taking it far enough to stand out. However, it's not the only fight in this style. So I was caught in a tough spot about what I should place higher, Cousin Eddie from Head On or Minion from Black because they're both essentially the same fight. Cousin Eddie is a rehash of Minion, however, Cousin Eddie also has more going on. I knew I was gonna place them back to back, but in what order? I decided to give Cousin Eddie the nod for a few reasons. For one, the level you fight him in is more interesting, being an edited version of the Los Angeles level from earlier in the game. Secondly, it starts you off with a bunch of rednecks on ATVs that you have to take out before you can get to the fight proper which adds a bit of anticipation and a little bit of flavor to the boss fight. And third, it's also just kind of funny. You're not destroying shield generators, you're destroying rednecks, and by destroying all the rednecks, you can destroy the whole trailer. Something about rednecks being a source of power is funny to me. But it's still the same as the minion fight from Black. You destroy all the individual parts of the car that's protecting it from damage, and then take it head on. It's definitely a rehash, but it's a fun rehash that makes the most out of the concept in order to elevate it slightly beyond the thing it's blatantly copying. I wasn't sure if I was going to put the minion fight from Twisted Metal 2 at the top of the list, given that it's part of my favorite level in the series. I opted not to, because while the level as a full package is my favorite, the actual boss fight as a standalone event is great, but not extraordinary. However, picture the scene. You're playing through this game for the first time. You just beat level 4, Amazonia, aka the Firewalk. You're well aware that you're halfway through the game. You're waiting for the load screen for the next level to come up, but instead, you're greeted with this plain text message. It's at this point, you'd probably sh** your pants. So on this epic battlefield, you have a rematch with the final boss of the first game, Minion. It's a tough boss, with its standard attack being a death sentence, a combination of a freeze blast and warthog special. So it does significant damage, as well as leaves you open for further attacks. He's a bitch to deal with so it's a fight that naturally encourages stealthy attacks and unusual playstyles. It's hard as nails, but outside of that special attack, it pulls no cheap tricks. It's just down to you and your skill. You have to utilize everything that's up your sleeve, as well as all the different aspects and all the different tricks at your disposal in the level. And since it's the best level in the series in my opinion, it certainly helps the overall grade of the actual boss fight. Since Twisted Metal 2 is already fun to play, taking that game's already fun mechanics and turning them up to 11 is exactly what a boss fight should strive to achieve. Maybe it's a fight that's elevated overall by the game or the level it's part of, but hey, if the fight is fun overall, then who cares how it achieves that? As far as being a mid-game boss that ends the easy mode, quite frankly, this is a superb fight. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so basically, I knew from the beginning that Warhawk from Twisted Metal Black was going to be the boss fight that would place at the top of the list. Because it's not only a great fight in itself, but it's also the most unique fight in the series that manages to stay within the parameters of the genre. So it's about as subversive as you could get. The final boss of Twisted Metal Black has it to where you're on a circular platform at the top of a building suspended above an abandoned or nearly abandoned city, so you can easily fall off to your death. What's more, there's very little cover on this roof, so you have to utilize what little cover you have, and if not, 
keep moving. Warhawk, which gets its name from the PS1 game of the same name, which many at Incognito Inc. worked on, is flying all over the place trying to kill you and has an impenetrable shield. The only way to get past the shield is via these tankers. These are secondary enemies that come after you while Warhawk is prowling around and they're each equipped with a flamethrower. So while they may be designed to be easily killed, they aren't slouches either. By destroying the tanker, it essentially becomes a trigger explosive for you to set off whenever you want, and you have to wait until Warhawk is close enough that it'll damage the shield, which may be difficult to time and may leave you open. Eventually, the shield will be destroyed, and at that point, it's just you against the helicopter. May the best man win. There are a few steps here, but it never moves away from the simple setup, so it's mechanically subversive, but still very much something you're familiar with. So for that mechanical subversion, being a very well-designed and challenging boss fight, having a very good setting, and quite frankly, being in what is my favorite Twisted Metal game, Warhawk from Twisted Metal Black is the undisputed best boss fight in the entire Twisted Metal series. Alright, well that was fun. I don't really have any grand closing statement this time around, since this was a shorter ranking video than my previous outings, and it was also significantly more straightforward. But you know, I enjoy doing these ranking videos, so of course expect more in the future, as I've said in the past. If you like this video and want to support the channel, you can donate to my Patreon for unique perks and rewards such as early access, Discord benefits, exclusive content, and more, like these fine folks right here. And for the record, I'm not saying that these people are part of the Patreon perks, all I'm saying is that they are, you know, the patrons that are being shouted out on the screen right now. And an extra special thank you to users Brooklyn, Deepetch, Gaw004, Joseph Rosas, Layabout, Nicholas Pino, Raf, and Farmcat84 for going above and beyond. And if you want to support the channel in a more direct fashion, you can like this video, leave a comment telling me what you think, subscribe, and hit the notification icon so you're always up to date on what I'm doing. I'm still pretty sure YouTube isn't publishing my videos to people's subscription feeds. I've been the King of Snark Style right here on Tactical Bacon Productions, and I will see you next time. Peace!